Well, I'm super excited to be sitting down with one of my favorite guys that played for the Dallas Cowboys. You sort of are the heartbeat of the Dallas Cowboys organization even now. You're here at the workout at the Sports Performance Center at Frisco, and there are literally fans outside. There's some young guys just waiting for you to sign swag, people walking by, all these young college guys. You need no introduction. I got Des Bryant here with me, uh, as well as your wide receivers coach, D. Rob. Holding it down in the lab. Of course, you had Corey Coleman up here as well, Lil Jordan Humphrey, but we want to focus on you, Des. For a lot of people that have been following your videos, uh, you know, there's been mixed emotions. Some people say, looking a little slow still. Maybe your time has passed. What's your message to them? You know, my message is this right here. Like, first and foremost, I've never been a speed guy, so I just blocked that out. Um, I've been running routes. My routes has improved tremendously thanks to this guy over here, especially getting in and out of my breaks. You know, I used to rely on pure ability, um, which I still have. Um, you know, um, I really I, I really blocked that out. I know I can play this game. I'm really not worrying about nobody who never played this game. And, you know, for the people who still in this game, seeing my workouts, giving me their feedback, that's the only thing that matters to me. You know, um, you know when I got guys like, Earl Thomas come in on my stuff, getting messages from Patrick Peterson. Those are elite DB guys. You know, that's the only thing that matters to me. So, you know, I'm going to continue to keep grinding. You know, um, I got my head down. I'm not expecting anything. I'm just going to work and see where it takes me. Des, I was there for you four hours after you got cut from the Cowboys. That was an emotional day. And then I was there when you got signed by the New Orleans Saints. Two days later, you turn up on a route. The Achilles injured awful because as you and I joked I felt like I was chopping you off at school and you'd found new classmates and you were like ready to rock how are you different now than you were back then mentally well mentally um I felt like I had a lot of mixed emotions you know I had just been recently cut from the Cowboys I wasn't I wasn't really trying to play football that year but I'm gonna save that for another time um I just wasn't where I needed to be mentally and um I appreciate Coach Payton for bringing me in and believing in me. And I appreciate those guys you know, that was there because they brought me in. They showed me crazy love, you know, something I'll never forget. The best 48 hours of my life is up there. Um, i never forget that, you know, and having that in the back of my head, that's another reason why I wanted to continue to keep grinding. But I wanted to take my time, you know, so I can focus, really get my mind right, really understand where I'm at in life. And... You know, just get my priorities in check. And I feel like I've done that and I'm doing it now. And, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm just grinding, you know, and I'm looking to play ball this year. Des, you know, I know you've said on social media and stuff that you didn't want the Des from two years ago. Right. Like, like, regardless of what teams think, you know, you, you didn't want that Des. Right. Do you think that teams will want this Des? Of course. You know, it'd be crazy if they didn't. You know, um, like I said, I want to play football. These past couple of years, I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to play football. You know, um, not because I didn't love it. It was just more so of me having a healthy brain, healthy, just healthy around me, making sure I got all the love that I need around me. And, you know, I need to sit back and watch the game. I need to sit back and, you know, look at the guys. You know, I just need to see the game and, you know, just watch it from, from the outside. And I did. Uh, the love came back. I had this guy, D. Robs, you know, stand on me constantly about, come on, man, you still got it. You still got it, you know. And, you know, just hearing hearing it from guys who believe in me, like, you know what, hell with it. You know, I'm with it. Let's go. You know, and that attitude came back and that fire and desire. You know, so, you know, I'm here. I'm looking to see what I can do. So, Rob, you, you, you think Des still got it? Oh, definitely. Um, I train a lot of elite receivers who are A-plus years in the NFL, um, and he moves just as well as those guys right now, especially coming off of his Achilles injury. Um, when you saw him moving for a while back on the videos, of course, he, was, he wasn't he was that far removed from his surgery and things like that. So, of course, he was going to be running with a little limp. But right now that he's back healthy, he's doing everything that he needs to do off the field, the rehab, the maintenance, the therapy on his body to, to you know, um, keep him moving efficiently. So he looks tr 10 times better. No. Des, I don't want this to be a PR stunt. I've always no. kept it real with you, right? right. So I'm not going to coddle you when I ask you some of these questions. Uh -huh. You know, one of the knocks I think has been, you know, some of the social media stuff, right? right. You know, right after, you know, we had our sit down, you talked about the Garrett guys. Yep. And then we're there at training camp mm -hmm. and you name checked a, a, some of them. Mm -hmm. 
Do you regret that? Because I felt like there were some people within the Cowboys community, but also teammates right. that you soured with them because of all of that. Well, I, I say this. Um, I think um, it was, a, you know, it, it was an emotional time. And um, for guys who know me and a lot of those guys, you know, who know me inside that locker room, you know, um, I am an emotional guy. You know, but it, you know, it's all for it's all for love. You know, I really don't mean, you know, I really don't mean no harm, you know, by you know, I just like to speak my piece and, you know, from my honest view. You know, um there's no bad blood with none of those guys. You know, I still love those guys, wish those guys the best. Like I said, I root for those guys these past two years. You know, you, you know who I'm rooting for. You know, um Sean Lee, he knows that. Um and any other guy that, you know, well, I ain't really have problems with no with anybody on the team really at least I didn't know but um I feel like it's good you know I still take these guys from here and there uh, Dak I uh, talked to Zeke from here and there um talked to Mari so I didn't play with Amari but me and Mari text we play man together you know, I talk to Gallup whenever um he's out and about and if I see him around it's always good times and good vibes you know um I don't think that's never gonna change you know my heart is here regardless wherever I go and play you know, um, you know, it's all love. I don't have no problem with anybody. That's an important distinction. Do you think that you hurt yourself at all when you were released from the Cowboys by putting it out there that you were still hung up on the Cowboys, that there were only certain teams that you want to play for? Do you have any regrets turning down the Ravens, the Browns? Well, well, I would say this. Um, I don't want to necessarily say I turned down Baltimore um, or Cleveland. You know, it was a good reason why I didn't, you know, didn't want to play ball. You know, like I said, I wasn't mentally there. You know, and um, Coach Payton, he was on me more than he was really coming at me more than those other teams. So I'm like, man, hell with it. You know, um, he giving me that opportunity to get myself together. He wasn't just gonna throw me into the fire. You know, so and um, he kept it real with me. So. I think it was a no-brainer, you know, for me just to even attempt to try it. So that's what I did, you know. So I don't want to say I turned down the Ravens. I would have took that deal in no time if my brain was there, you know. I would have went with Cleveland in no time if my brain was there, but it wasn't. So, you know, um, you know, um, I didn't want to disrespect the game, and I didn't want to disrespect myself. That's just who I am. That's just who I am as a person. What have you done to get your mind right? You know, um, be around my family. You know, be around the people who love me. Uh, focus on my projects, you know, the things that I'm working on, you know, focusing on the things that I can control, you know, just reflecting back on a whole bunch of stuff. You know, um, like I said, um, I need, I honestly felt like by me being away from the game, it helped me in a sense, you know, and, you know, um, I, I took everything again. I'm, I feel like I'm where I need to be. I think things happen for a reason, and I'm going to go with that. Des, you know, when you talk about this comeback and, and the work you've been putting in with D-Rob and, and everybody wants to see that because, you know, like you said, you were somebody who was getting by so much on your athleticism and maybe they see you put in the work now and they go, yeah, but Des, you're 31, you're coming off an Achilles. We'd still like to see that athletic ability. I, I, know, you, you, I, I know you've started working with Bobby Stroop over at APEC, yep. um, who's been really instrumental in, in the way Patrick Mahomes has come along. Um, I guess talk a little bit about, you know, what you're hoping to accomplish with that work with APAC and, and yeah, how those workouts um, have been going. I'll tell you this, Bobby, Bobby is tremendous. I think he's exactly what I need, just like D-Rock. You know, um, Bobby is, he's one of those, it reminds me of college and back when I was in high school. You know, like I can hear Coach Glass' voice. I can hear Bobby's voice. You know, Bobby in tune to what he do. Like he's going to bring the best out of you. He's going to make you feel like doing it when you don't want to do it. You need those type of guys around you, and that's Bobby. You know, um, he care about his guys, you know, and he tell, you, he tell his guys the truth, and that's what I like, you know. The truth puts you on your heels at all times, and I think that's what I'm used to, and that's why it's so easy for me to, you know, gravitate to Bobby. So I'm actually looking forward to seeing Bobby tomorrow and um, getting some work in with him. Now, Rob, I know we, you said Des has still got it, and, and he's still got that ability. But, you know, when you're out here and you're working, you guys are talking all the time, and, you know, you're, you're taking in things from him, and you guys are figuring out the best way to run these routes and everything. Where do you still think Des needs to improve on this way back? Where, where would you isolate somewhere? It's like this is what, something we're still really trying to tighten up. Well, I would just say the, um, 
just the top end of his routes, just the top end of his curls, comebacks, and his arms, um, and, and and just keeping his foot up on him on his speed cuts and his speed outs. Those are the things that I see he can he can improve on. But um, he's got tremendously better um, coming off of the ball, and he's gotten better bringing his arms with him at the top of his routes. Um, he looks more smooth and fluent. So it's there. It's coming. Right now we're about like 80% where we need to be. Right. So, if, you know, you have a lot of connections with receivers and, and coaches around the NFL, and if one of these teams was considering Dez and they said, you know, hey, Rob, we, we really want to consider talking to Dez or, or want to look at bringing him in, um, give us your assessment of where you think he's at right now. Where, where would you, if you were giving them an honest assessment of where you think Dez is at in the comeback trail, what, what would you say to them? Well, I'll tell them, Coach, I mean, he's um, he's a lot better shape. He's about 80 90% where he needs to be. Um, he's a great team guy. He'll be a great receiver to have in the room to show the young guys the ropes, teach them how to be a professional, teach them how to win on certain scenarios in their route running. Um, so I definitely think that he'll be a, an asset um, brought in on any team that, that brings him in because um, he adds that, that experience value along with the passion and the energy and the heart that he has to play in the position. And I think he'll turn that whole receiver room into a, 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 a war zone because everybody will, you know, um, will be ready to attack and play, and play like how they need to play. All right, let's talk about some of the other knocks, Des, because I talk to GMs around the league. I talk to coaches. One of the things was being on time. And that's important when you've got young guys in a room. They're right. trying to build up the next crop of young wide receivers. They look to the veterans. Right. Uh, showing up to the physical therapy treatments yep. was another knock on you. Right. And just putting in the work on your body. Right. Are those things that you're prepared to do for the next team and that you've now realized the value of? Of course. Of course. You know, uh, like a lot of those things that you mentioned, I think that's a lot of things that was in the, the beginning of my career. And right now, it's like, I got to do it, you know, like, I got to do it to get back right, you know, nobody's paying me to do this, I have to do this, you know, I'm getting up four or five o'clock in the morning, get my mind right to go see Bobby, I got to go drive 35 minutes to Fort Worth to go to APEC, I have to do those things, I'm not getting paid for that, so I think that's, I think that, that's the easy part, you know, um, like I said, I'm just getting myself back into the flow, getting my mind back right, and I'm looking. I'm looking forward to make plays because I know I still can. It's funny to me because I know you pretty well at this point now, does and a lot of people that sort of shrug off this idea of you coming back. I feel like need to go read that Rolling Stones article that was done on you a while back, right. where it talked about your childhood and what you came from. And you and you and I talked about that when we sat down after you got cut. That you came from the dirt. Right. When people look at this comeback as sort of improbable. Maybe walk through how improbable your childhood was right. to even get where you're at, where what I was saying earlier, you still two years removed from this league have fans literally wi lining up outside waiting for you to sign a helmet. Fans still throw up the X. It's iconic in a sense for a kid that came from Lufkin and, and as you said, really had nothing growing up. Right. I, I, I just, it, it's the raw, it's, it's, the, it's the passion. You know, I walk a lot of people's shoes, you know, and I, you know, I just... I be me, and I I think just by being me, you know, that give a lot of people hope. They're like, man, he can do it, I can do it, you know, regardless of whatever the situation is. Like, and that's just one thing that I want to give people. I made mistakes. I'm not perfect, you know, and I don't mind showing that. And I think, when, and and it's all about the bounce back. And when people see that, you know, they 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 attach on to it. And like I said, I want to give who I am. I don't want to give anything false. You know, if I fail, I fail. Hey, look, we tried, but that don't mean that I'm, you know, it's over. You know, and that's just the attitude that, I, that I'm going to fail to have, and it's just going to remain the same. Do you feel like you were pretty misunderstood when you are in the league, Des? I always felt that way. I always felt that way. You know, why? You, you know, just reasons for I, I can't. I can't explain why, you know. Um, I can't explain why I was misunderstood, but I know for the guys who know me, for the guys who be around me, they know what type of guy that I am. You know, um, it's so much stuff that I can say what I'd have done for guys, but that's just not me, you know. And, you know, I just don't feel comfortable. It's just the, it's it's from my heart. Everything is from my heart. You know, it's like I like to see guys, you know. I want I like to help guys be in the position so they can be their best. And i always been that way, you know. And like, I remember my rookie year uh, with the Hayes and stuff. I've never been a fan of it. Um that was Roy Williams. Yeah, Roy Williams, you know, but I tell you this, um, he reached out to me too a couple of years back and he told me he was proud of me. That meant everything to me. 
you know, and um, because I, I guess I, I'm assuming that you know he kind of understood, you know, who I am and you know where I come from, you know. But it's just one of those things when I go through bad experiences, the things I don't like, I, I'm flipping it. That's my whole goal is to flip it to make sure other guys don't go through it. Like when we would bring rookies in when I played for the Cowboys, I don't need you guys to walk on eggshells. I need you guys to come in here and be the best. I need you to have that same mentality that you had when you was that third year, fourth year guy there. Like, yeah, I understand. Respect the respect the older guys. Respect the coaches, of course, forever do that. But when you step in between those lines, I need that energy. I need that fire. I need to see who you are. I want to know what you're about, you know. And that's always been my attitude. Like, I'm no different from you. I don't care how long I've been here. I'm no different from you. You can teach me something, and I can teach you something. That's just always been my attitude, you know, when it came, you know, whenever I'm inside of that locker room. You know, it's just it's just who I am, regardless of the position. To that end, so many young kids and grown adults throw up the X. I don't think a lot of people realize where that came from. Right. So for our listeners that aren't familiar with what the X means, it's actually symbolic of something for you that's important and something that we're sort of talking about here in this podcast. Right. It's really basically is is X and not all of the negative. You know, just focusing, being laser focused and Knowing that, uh, you know, you shouldn't let other people's opinions weigh on you, you know, because we do. We all have different brains, and God gave us that for a reason, you know, and it's just, that's where, it, that's where, that's the meaning that I put behind it. But I did throw up the X because of Dante Hall. I just wanted to put my own meaning behind it, you know. Man, hey, look, I get a lot of crap, but I know who I am as a person. I'm going to X this out, and I'm going to stay laser focused, and I'm going to like my biggest goal is to be me, not change, not change who I am, but just continue to keep being me and, and let people see who I am, you know, for themselves. You know, Des, um, I know you're a big Facebook guy. You, yep. you like that because you, you like the ability to interact with the people. It's yep. like your little community. I know you've said that before. Um, there was a video back when you were at the Pro Bowl a couple years ago. Um, it was a video stream, and, and somebody had asked something in the comment section. You said, uh, I'm going to tell you this right now. He said, you guys can tell the whole world. The day I'm done playing for Dallas is the day I'm done playing football. Right. And I know you, you said you were in a bad headspace after the release from Dallas. Do you still think that's true, or, or, or are you still well, so committed to this has got to be Dallas for the comeback, or are you happy to go well, elsewhere now? Well, I'll tell you this. I'm going to keep it all the way honest and blunt. You know, um, I would love to have that opportunity just because it's not so much of – Oh, I just want to play for Dallas. No, I understand. I see what they have. You know, I see the talent that they have. They have Amari Cooper. They have Michael Gallup. They have Cobb. They have Dak. They have Zeke. They have Pollard. They have a loaded offense. They have Jarwin. And it's like, I'm like, man, I ain't really never been able to play with that much talent. Like, throughout my whole career, if you see it, I, I used to get double. I used to get an extra guy over the top. And I can only think of, man, you know, not to be selfish, but – I know if I got placed in a position like that, I would do some damage. I would do some damage, and I know it, it would help open up a whole bunch of things with, you know, creating different certain type of packages. That's a dream, you know. That is, that's a dream. Will it happen? I don't know. We don't know. But where I'm at right now, you know, my daughter asked me, Daddy, are you going to play football again? <laughs> that was one. That's what really clicked. You know, like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to play. I'm going to play ball. You know, so, you know, um, if it's not for Dallas, you know, Cowboy fans, hey, I want to play ball. So, I'm going to see where I'm going you know, to see who opened the doors for me. And I'm just trying to, you know, come in and do whatever they tell me to do, be the best version that I can help in any type of way. Is the, If that's me, you know, giving water to the quarterbacks, you know, to the running backs, you know, telling the other receivers, you know, certain things, you know, I don't mind. You know, I'm just – I missed the game. That's how hungry you are? Yeah. Let's, you, you've talked about, and we've heard reports that you've reached out to Stephen Jones. Yep. First, I want to know how that, that conversation went. Mm -hmm. Second of all, if Stephen said, because we know he could be a shrewd businessman. Yeah. All right, Des. <laughs> I'm going to bring you in here for about as cheap as I can go. Yeah. Does Des Bryant do that? Um... Your I know agent's going to hate I, me. Look, 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 look. I, <laughs> I, know, I know it wouldn't be what I would want, but I think it would be worth it. You know, I think it would be worth it because I think those guys have a real shot 
at going to the Super Bowl. I truly believe that. Like, I'm not just saying that, you know, how everybody say, Cowboys are going to the Super Bowl. No, they really have a legit chance to do that. You know, and it's just, that's what I see. I know game. I know the game of football. Like, I, I know the vibe. I just know, I know the vibes, you know, and I feel like I can help increase that vibe, you know, so. So you texted Steven how to go. It went better than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't blocked? <laughs> no, I wasn't blocked. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. You know, um, I texted him and I spoke my mind. I just basically just told him, you know, where I'm at in my life, you know, how I'm feeling, you know, I had time to reflect and all that stuff. Me knowing Mr. Jones, Stephen Jones, it'll be like, hey, Des, you know, um, I hope the best, um, but we'll be going in a different direction. He didn't say those words to me, so... That maybe so you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, you know, I, I took that and I ran with it. So, you know, it was like that also, you know, increased the, you know, the workout. Like, hey, we're going to get it, D. Like, right. let's get it, you know. Um, they got to see this. Like, it's, that see atti- it. it's that attitude, you know. But, you know, like I said, but for the most part, man, um, the conversation went very well, you know. It wasn't long, but. It wasn't like him. That's not to Steven and I. You know? <laughs> I keep stepping on Bobby's toes, but I've got so much to ask you. Yeah. I'll let Bobby weigh in here after this question. Yeah. Garrett and the regime are gone. You've got a new regime of Mike McCarthy and his staff. Mm-hmm. A, do you think a change would be good for you? And do you think that you need more of a disciplinarian type coach to keep you in line and get you at practice on time, find you when you're not at physical therapy? Do you need some boundaries? I don't, I don't, I don't, I honestly, I know you're a grown man. The the, the practice, the, the, the practice on time thing, I honestly don't know where that came from really, but, um, we'll save that for another time. But, um, (laughs) yeah, yeah, of course, of course, like. For the most part, when people say that, you know, me speaking negative on Coach Garrett, it's really not that. It's just I feel that I know the game of football. I know the vibe that you're supposed to have when you're supposed to be playing this game, when you're playing this game. And, you know, um, I leave it at that, you know, about Coach Garrett because I really don't want to speak much on him because I don't want to feel like I'm speaking negative. And you guys on cleared him. things up too, right? Right. Yeah. right. You know, it's just, you know, just the new look. Just me knowing Coach McCarthy, you know, over the years, watching him, how he's done things for Aaron Rodgers and, you know, um, how he loves to, you know, um, how he liked to run his offense. Kind of similar, it's different, but kind of similar to the Andy Reid type. You know, he's like, he, he, he liked the wideouts out there. You know, so, I, I you know, I just feel like he can – he can create something for me, you know. And he did say Des caught it. Yeah, he did. Say that, you know, so. <laughs> he, did. He, 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 he he finally acknowledged that. Right. So you know, um, he that instantly made him a real win in my eyes. So <laughs> you know, so well, yeah. you were uh, you were one of the last. I mean, there was the negotiation with Demarcus Lawrence, but you were one of the last real like franchise tag standoff guys <laughs> that the Cowboys had. And there's, I think, some concern or some uneasiness in Cowboys Nation right now about they're going to franchise Dak and this is they're going to be too far apart this is going to get contentious everybody always likes to hear from you in general your thoughts on on things with the Cowboys so so what do you think about the idea of getting Dak locked up long term my opinion just my opinion um yeah you you got to you have to you have to lock Dak up you know Dak he got he got these things that you can't teach you know, and a lot of people don't have it. You know, he's real great with the guys in the locker room. Like, that's that stuff is contagious, you know, and a lot of guys don't have that. I'm just going to be honest. He's a great football player, excellent football player. I watched Dak improved each and every year, you know, and, you know, I remember before he came in, Will McClay can tell you this himself. I still had text messages. First thing I texted him was when we had drafted Dak at the time, he a winner. You know, because when I watched him at Mississippi State, who heard of, who, who the hell heard of Mississippi State? <laughs> you know, the I, disrespect for Mike Leach and that SEC <laughs> program for next year. <laughs> it, 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 you know, it, it was, you know, it was like, and I was like, damn, this guy real good. I had watched him play against LSU. And I was like, man, hey, he the real deal. You know, I didn't even think that, you know, that was even a thought of drafting him. That was the crazy part about it. And um, when he had came, y'all, I was like, yeah. I could just tell. I could. You could just tell. He he. His chest high. His head high. You know. He he's not trying to be something that he's not. 
You know, that's who he is as a person. And I think that's what I loved about him. You know, and, you know, and when you like that, God's going to naturally follow him. I'm a lot older than him. But I'm like, yeah, I can, I can follow behind that guy. Well, and see, that's that's the interesting because yeah. you were there for, of course, a lot of your career. There no. were injury issues with Tony Romo, so there were always backup quarterbacks stepping in and, and no. having to do things. You know, Kyle Orton and Brandon Weed and Matt Castle. You play with all those guys, mm-hmm. and and not to try and put them down at all. That's not the comparison. But how was it different that year when when Dak stepped in? Why why was the energy different that year as compared to other guys when they tried to step in? Other than just the talent. Well, I think because of, I think him and, I think Dak and Zeke had that natural raw connection already. I think that played a part too, you know, and um, it was a lot of new guys and, you know, and they knew Dak, you know, so, and I think that had a lot to do with it too. So, you know, um, and then at the time that's what worked. You had to you had to stay with it, you know. Nothing towards Romo because Romo he was excellent in his way, and Dak is excellent in his way. Either way would have worked. So, you know, and well, you can't go wrong now. Now, and I will. I am just curious because this is the raging debate on social media right now. Yeah. So Kevin Sherrington from the Dallas Morning News had polled Brad Sham, Babe Laufenberg, and Gil Brandt, and said, "Give me your top five Cowboys quarterbacks <laughs> of all time." All of them, I believe put Dak ahead of Tony. And so now it's become this kind of raging debate of, you know, who, who, whose legacy is, is becoming stronger. Obviously a lot of it's projection with Dak because he's so early. Yeah. So, so if somebody was going to say, Des, we need you to weigh in here on, on trying to get him just to walk I'm in not, a truck I'm not, he, yeah, he, he, he can answer. Yeah, he he can answer. I'm just, I, I, I want to hear this. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I'm going I'm to give, give, give you my honest opinions and I'm going to go year for year. Okay. So yeah, if you, you really can't, you really can't compare it because Dak can't play it as long as Tony. Mm-hmm. But if you go year for year, yeah, you would have to say Dak. Look what Dak has done. Shit. My bad, but No, you're good. <laughs> two two out of two out of three years, he's been to the playoffs. Yeah. You know, and you just gotta give that to him. You know, and look at his win win lose ratio. You know, he's won way more games than he didn't lost. So uh, you don't have to tell me I'm the president of the Dak he, Prescott He really fan is club. the president of the I Dak am, Prescott I fan am. club. He's I an lead, unofficial I president. The there. All right, I've got to ask you this then, since Bobby touched on it. You got yourself in a sort of contentious contract negotiations with the Jones family, and I can't imagine that they're the easiest to go against because you've got the public sentiment. It is the Cowboys. We're talking about it ad nauseum. People are now saying Dak Prescott is greedy. Why not worry about your teammates? you got to get you know, Amari paid, Byron Jones, you know, you've got all these free agents. Describe what it was like going through your contract negotiation and how you shut out everybody. Granted, you had Rock Nation negotiating that I one, sh- which helped. He's I, got Todd France. How did I shut it out? Did I shut it out? That was, <laughs> <laughs> that was the, that's the question. You know, it, it was tough. You know, it was, it was real tough because, you know, I spent all these years with the Cowboys and, I'm like, man, you know, what's the hold up? I'm like, they know what I'm about, you know, and hearing all these things that, you know, I didn't hear before, it kind of bothered me a little bit. And I, I'm not realizing, oh, this is this is the business, you know, and, you know, um, my message to Dak is, you know, like, just block out all the other stuff. It's, it's going to get done. It's going to get done, and don't worry, you are the guy, you know, um, you got to know that first and foremost. He is the guy. You know who? I wouldn't replace him. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Yeah. I'm being. I'm. Who are you gonna replace him with? You know, it's 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 one of those things that you don't want to mess up. He got the potential to bring you several Super Bowls, just because he's that type of guy. And you know, like I said, um, you know, I pray that you know, Mr. Jones, the whole entire Jones family, understand that. Um, Know that he's, hey, that's what you want. That's what you want leading your franchise. Um, it's it's not every day you're going to pull up on a Dak Prescott. It's just not every day. You know, you, first round, second round, that stuff don't mean nothing. Don't get caught up in that. He got something that can't be coached. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not just shooting smoke. And look at Demarcus Lawrence and Zeke, how contentious those things got. And they both got paid. Yeah. 
you got paid. Yeah. People are going to get in paid. In the end, it'll get done. Right. Now, now I know you've, we've sat here and, you, and you've uh, talked a lot and, and made reference to it and you've patted Rob on the shoulder here and said, this guy right here next to it. Yeah. Just in general, I guess, expand on what Rob's coaching has meant to you the last year and a half and, and in general, what because I mean, it's one of those things where you always hear when you talk about a veteran or, or what makes a veteran good, one of the go-to lines football players always right. have is he's seen a lot of football. Right. So he knows a lot of football. So you'd seen a lot of football, but it seems like you've learned a lot even coming to Rob as a guy who's seen right. a lot of I have, football. I have. I've learned a lot. I've learned. I say this about Coach Rob. Um, I'm not saying this because he's here. I didn't say this away from you know when he wasn't around me. Like He's really like put a whole different perspective on the game for me. Like just just basically like just repetition and paying attention to the small things. Things that I wouldn't even think about. Like he really he's a big reason of the fire that I got. He's a big reason. He brought my confidence back. And I talk, you know, we joke around and you know, we last time we left out of here, I say, look, when I win this comeback player of the year, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, you're gonna be right there. Yeah. I told you that, right? You did. I, and, you did. and I mean that because I just feel I I I feel like you know, um, I would have been let it go if it wasn't for him. That's how I'm just going to shoot you straight. You know, um, I'm excited. Hey, he'll tell you, I hit him up, D. Hey, what time are we going? You know, yeah, it used to be the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be the other way around. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You know, it's like, you know, it's, it, it, I'm, I'm excited. You know, I'm, I'm excited to listen to him. You know, like, he's no, he know exactly what he's talking about. Like I said, you know, um, He's a route guru, so you know he—he's everything. You know, whenever I get on the team, first game, he has to be there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's—it's it's that type of feel, it's that type of vibe. You know, he—he he make me want it. You know, he a big reason for me being this way. And you know, it's uh, thinking back to something I know earlier. You're talking about teammates and the locker room chemistry, and, and you were seeming kind of romanticizing it a little bit. Um, we all saw that viral clip from the All or Nothing where you and Jordan Lewis kind of yeah. went head to head. And <laughs> it was a little contentious, but I know you guys looked back fondly at it when it was. Is that what you miss most about the game? That's what the I, juice that's what from I those miss, type of that's moments? That's not the first time me and Jordan went at it. <laughs> I can imagine. We, we all, we've all heard Jordan, Jordan talk. Like <laughs> but when Jordan was a rookie, like, and Coach Gary was sitting there, uh, so a lot of coaches were just sitting there. And I remember I had I had beat him on a um I beat him on a slot fade, and we was getting ready to run another play. I forgot who st- I, th- I want to say it was Byron who stepped in front of me. Jordan moved Byron out of the way, and he was like, "Nah, I want him." <laughs> I instantly fell in love with him. <laughs> I did. I, I instantly fell in love with him because I was like, "That's what we need. This yeah. is what we missing on the defensive side of the ball," and. I used to always step. I used to always step on the table for him. Jordan need to play. I don't know why Jordan not playing. Like the practice stuff, that don't bother me. Yeah, we're gonna get into it in practice. We're gonna fight in practice. Like, but I know when game time comes Sunday, hey, let's get this shit. Yeah, hey, yeah you know it's that type it's of guy attitude. you can go to war with. Exactly. Right, go to war, bring you closer. You know, it, it was those things. Like still to this day, you know, I talk to Jordan from here and there. I um, I was I forgot this um little facility that I was going to right around the corner from here. Some some of the guys go there and um, I was talking to Jordan, just let them know how proud I am. When they played the Chicago Bears and that interception that he had got on the sideline, I was like, they should have been playing him. I'm I'm literally sitting on my couch on like they should have been playing him, you know, because this is the type of guy that he is. And this scoop and score against the Giants, you know, he he just had that knack for the ball, you know. Um, the, the, the interception is against the Saints, you know, to seal the game up. Like, I just gravitate to those kind of players. I can recall, like, and there's only a few players that I do that with. Mm-hmm. Jordan Hill, ball player. I love ball players, you know. He's a dog for the game. I got to tell you, it's hard listening to you talk about your passion for the game because I sat down with Tony Romo at Super Bowl, mm-hmm. and he's just as passionate. And I think about DeMarco Murray when I talk to him, how pat- to not see you guys, Jason Witten, throw him in there, to not be able to get something done. How hard is it for you to do these workouts a block away from the star to be this close to Jerry and Steven and not go knock on their office to not go to the stadium and go to these games 
Mike McCarthy said it, I thought, very interestingly when he took away from football and he said, I needed football. We needed football talking about his family. Does that resonate with you? Of course. Of course. Exactly right now at this point. You know, at one point in time, like I said, you need you just need that time to sit back and reflect. Like you don't know what you're missing until it's gone. You know what I'm saying? And me being 31, people want to be like, oh, you know, that's old, man. This guy's still doing it in the league. 32, 33, 34 playing wide receiver. And, you know, um, I'm like, man, I'm not that, you know, I'm I'm right there. You know, mm-hmm. I'm still in between a little bit. You know, like if I was 33 or something, I would be like, ah, I'm going to. Look at Adrian Peterson playing one of the toughest positions 30, in the league. He's 35. Right. Yeah. Or, or look at Richard Sherman coming back having an all-pro year in his 30s off an Achilles. Right. Yeah. You know, so so it, it's and, and I tell you this, this is one thing that I learned to focus on too. You know, like, you know how it is with negative stuff. That's going to get the most highlight. That's going to get the most shine, the most bright, you know. But what I've learned to do is just, man, I'm going to stay focused on this positive. Like, do do do. Look at, do, do you really see, like, it's like God talking to me. Look at all of these thousands and thousands of positive comments. You're just going to point out that one negative and let that make you feel right. some type of way. No, we're going to scratch that. These people believe in me, so you know what? I'm going to believe in me just as much as they believe in me, and I'm going to keep on rocking. So that's the attitude. So. I love that, Des. Des, thank you so much for sitting down with us. I know it's been a while. I always feel like when we can sit down – Sometimes I feel like people can sort of see that side of you that doesn't always get projected. You know, social media isn't always our friend. Right. Uh, But I think the people that do know you, to your point earlier, they know what you're about. Having been your friend and covered you, I've seen a change in you. So I want this for you. I hope this works out for you. And uh, we'll keep following your workouts. And I know your fans are anxious to see where you end up. I appreciate it. D-Rob. Thank you, Jane. You the man. We always appreciate you uh, allowing us into your workouts and you keep cranking out some of these boys in the league, okay? Okay. Man, he deserves an NFL job too, by the way. <laughs> hey, I'm so kind of selfish because you know, if he do that, then it's going to be tough. For right. You, you ain't got access no, no, to him. because then that'll, that'll get you on a – that'll for sure get you on the roster because then, <laughs> then Rob's calling the shots. <laughs> right. <laughs>